Chapter 4 The Sage Anselm strolled down the well-lit halls of the castle, running his hands along the rough granite stone of the wall as he went. Though very tired, he whistled a cheerful tune as he made his way to the western quarter of the fortress to the Warden Hall. The team of wardens that he had led during the first part of the assault on Grimhall had returned, and he expected they were most likely back in the barracks. He descended the long stairs and found the wooden doors to the mess hall gaping open. The unexpected sound of lute and pipe music muddled with hoots of laughter and cheers poured from inside. He made his way through the doors to see the room filled with his fellow wardens, even some of his own recruits. The tables of the long mess hall had been pushed to the edge of the room, and many of the wardens were singing and dancing in the centre. At the far end of the room, a makeshift stage had been constructed from wooden crates and ale barrels, with several wardens perched on them playing instruments loudly and not a little off-key. Nobody noticed his entrance, and he quickly located who he knew would be behind the raucous party. On a stool against the bar of the hall sat a tall and beautiful woman with long blonde hair that curled ferociously back and forth over ornate ear jewels. She wore the long dark green robes of the sage, the highest-ranking warden aside from the high sage, but it had been tailored to her liking to emphasize her womanly figure as much as possible. As always, several of the top clasps that ran up the center of the warden robe were unfastened, revealing the jewels dangling about her chest. She wore tall black boots that reached the bottom of her knees, and her cross legs bounced casually as she surveyed the celebration. No other warden, especially a sage, would dream to dress so wildly, but she was different. Anselm made his way over to the bar, and stopped in front of her with folded arms and a stern face. Her head was tipped back as she drained the rest of her ale from her mug, and she jumped when she brought it back down and found him glaring. I should have known you would do something like this, Anselm said. You are aware that they're all supposed to be back in the barracks, aren't you? Aha, uh -huh, the woman yelped. If it isn't my victorious little brother back from the seas. Don't speak down to me, Ella. These wardens need their rest, yet you call a festival. If the High Sage saw this, we'd be under the axe. Wipe that sad look off your face, Ansel. It's no wonder that they all act so timid around you, while they laugh and bow to me. You are always so serious and depressing. And besides, High Sage Fridmorton is too busy making preparations to go to Grimhall and clean up our mess to take notice of a little innocent fun. Now sit down and have a drink. She pulled him down by his robe onto the stool next to her and raised her glass. He frowned, sensing that the ale had added to her natural zaniness. They all laugh and bow to you because you're a sage and they have to but Anselm began, but Elastra cut him short. Everyone, she shouted. The crowd quieted at the sound of her deep strong voice and turned. I give you Captain Anselm. They all erupted into cheers, assuming that his presence indicated his approval of their celebration. They all hollered a cheer to his name and kept right on with their merriment, leaving the siblings to talk. Elastra handed her brother a mug and slammed it against her own. Fate take you Ella, Anselm said with a grin. He still wished he could somehow get them back to the barracks but surrendered the effort. He could blame his sister if it came right down to it. The men had done a fine job at Grimhall by all accounts, and were doing a better job than he to fight back the guilt of fulfilling their duties. Anselm took a few sips of his drink and placed the mug on the bar so he could retrieve his records from his satchel. Elastra laughed. Typical Ansel. What would you do if those records of yours were lost? I'm sure you would shrivel up and die. If I lost it, I'd end up being a loon like you, he retorted. It would do you well to stick to your duties and take care of yourself once in a while. It's not good for you to neglect your records. Especially with the hexes you use. You're in danger of losing your most important memories. You can hardly remember your own name sometimes. Elastra winked and smiled as if she were proud. Many a thing is required of a sage, she said condescendingly. One day you will understand. Anselm snorted. He knew she was pestering him and she was skillful at it. Anselm knew that a sage should be one of sound mind and reason. Elastra was reckless. Surely Fridmorton knew that. He often wondered how someone like her even ended up becoming a sage. You don't give me enough credit, Elastra sang haughtily, throwing her hair back from her face. 
Her tone was suddenly more serious. I keep my record so you stop your worrying. See. She patted her robe down looking for the right pocket and pulled out a beaten old leather book from a fold on the inside. It was no bigger than her hand and a lace tied around it acted as the only binding, holding in loose sheets and random scraps of parchment that jutted from beneath the cover. She held it up proudly, but Anselm shook his head. When was the last time you wrote? He asked. Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, a week ago, perhaps. Yes. Right, Anselm said. Sage, keeper of the hexes indeed. Last year there was a disaster outside the city, and we happened to be there to help. What was that? Elastra rolled her eyes as if the answer was obvious, but grimaced as her mind drew a blank. Anselm slapped his forehead. His test had worked yet he was still baffled. The fire in the North Fields, Ella. How could you forget that? It was our hexes that saved that family's lives and half of their livestock. You see, you've got to keep your records. The mind of man is twice as likely to remember something. If it is written down, she finished for him. I know, Ansel. And anyway, if I've neglected my records, it's because I've spent every moment since we took the Warden Pact poring over hex scrolls, and now doing the same with the High Sage. That's why I'm able to quench fires like that, even if I can't quite remember them. She tried to drink from her tankard, but stopped and squinted down when she realized it was empty. She tossed it behind her instead. The more powerful the hexes I use, the more mother and father will turn in their graves the day they die. She leaned back and watched the men more somberly now. She had to bring up mother and father. She drinks too much. Anselm decided that he could stop nagging for the moment and let his sister enjoy the evening. His thoughts returned again to his records, but ironically, he couldn't remember what he had been writing earlier. Irritated, he returned the book to his satchel. He wouldn't get any more writing or reading done for now. I'm leaving, he said, standing up. I'll be in council with the king soon, and there is a lot to report. He rubbed his temple as the song ended and cheers burst from the wardens. I need rest. Thank you for listening. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next chapter. Episodes go live every Monday and Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The audiobook can be purchased in its entirety on Google Play Books. Get the whole trilogy now in both paperback and ebook formats. All links are in the description.